Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. Today we are going to shift the focus to an issue and to a problem that perhaps has not ever got the attention that it should in this country. And there are reasons why it hasn't got that much attention. The problem I'm referring to are the issues of the elderly, the treatment they're getting, the fact that as joint families start to break up and we move to more and more nuclear families, many who are old, who are elderly, start to feel themselves neglected. Perhaps one of the reasons why this has not ever got too much attention in the country is because we are often, it's often said that we are a really young country. And we are. We are a young country. We are a youthful country. But let's not forget that the number of those who are senior citizens who are elderly, that number is growing and growing really fast. 36% according to some estimates. That's the rate at which the number of the elderly are growing. So this is going to become a problem that we are going to need to start putting more and more attention to. And one of the additional reasons for that are some of the statistics that we are now starting to see. A recent Help Age report said 80% of the elderly, 80%, think about that figure, put that into your head and think about it again. 80% of the elderly report some sort of abuse or the other. And that's sad. That's a really worrying figure. And when you add to that the fact that many who are old or elderly have other issues like loneliness, like feeling discarded, like being ill-treated by members of people around them, even if it's not outright abused, just that feeling of loneliness get, that, you, that you get if you're by yourself and no one's really there on a day-to-day -day basis to talk to you, to take care of you, all of that can start to mount up. And I'm not even going into issues like health and others. So today, we are here to try and look at some of these issues, to talk about them, to see how serious the problem is, and also very specifically look at one issue. Is the breakup of the joint family and the rise of nuclear families, is that one of the reasons why this is becoming a problem in India? Is this one of the reasons why you never had this to contend with this through the centuries, and now it is becoming a big issue? So we have a great panel joining us to talk us through all of that. Rahul Ishwar, activist, one of those who feels that, yes, that's exactly what's happening as you break up the joint family, you move to nuclear families. It is what is causing the problems. Mehra Sood is a Supreme Court lawyer, human rights activist, human rights lawyer, has been dealing with these issues at great length, as has Amit Lakhani, who's an activist with the Safe Family Foundation, again, really concerned about some of what's happening. Reena Thakka, it's always good to have you on the show as well. And indeed, it's a, it's a pleasure to have with us Padam Shri, Alec Padam Si, the theatre veteran, ad guru. It's, it's always a pleasure to hear from you as well, Alec. Thank you all so much for joining us. But before I, before I actually get into the meat of the discussion, our teams have been out there studying this problem in some depth. Many case studies, hearing from a lot of people, trying to understand the full extent of the problem. So let's just take a quick look at this special report. They were there, they are there. Okay. And uh, the, the, uh, the, but uh, uh, since we since they were there, they are. Once a sturdy voice bouncing off the classroom walls, now drained and withering. 82 year old Kaleem Bahadur, a professor of philosophy, retired more than 15 years ago. His health deteriorated after the death of his wife some years ago and his memory began to fade. His daughter, a resident in the U.S., opted for a senior citizen home for him in Delhi for round-the-clock attention. Without family support, 81-year-old Asha Puri has been living a lonely life. She stayed with her brothers for a decade after retiring as a government teacher. But as her mobility and funds dwindled, so did her family's affection. So three years ago, she checked herself into an old age home. बच्चों को भी एक एजुकेशन होनी चाहिए राइट फ्रॉम दी वेड मॉरल एजुकेशन को मॉरली एजुकेटेड होने चाहिए इस बात के लिए कि हमारे बड़े बूढ़े और इनको हमने बाहर नहीं करना क्या लिए नहीं कि इनका पैसा लूटने की तरफ दिमाग लगाएं अपना आखिर में लगता है जब मरने का वक्त हो तो घर वाले करीब हों ये वाली बात लगती है वो वो उससे घबराहट हो जाती है कभी कभी an United Nations report released this week shows the percentage of people above the age of 60 is expected to go up in India from 8% in 2015 to 19% in 2050. That is a scary 200 million in absolute numbers. How to take care of the elderly as they grow old, how to provide them with adequate uh, you know, health protection, cover the healthy is one big area. Vardhan is one of the few senior homes in Delhi that is equipped with dementia care. But the demand 
is three times more than its capacity. The elderly are among the most neglected and forgotten members of our society, making it essential that we refocus our attention towards them and share their responsibility, because you and I will be walking their path sooner or later. With Suresh and Sanjay Kaushik, Snigdha Basu, NDTV. All right, I Amit, mean, why don't I start off with you? Okay. How serious is the problem of the elderly? Uh, Vikram, uh, to start with, I would say that uh, family system in India has, has always been a very strong pillar in the society. And elderly uh, with their you know, pool of knowledge and experience have already, always been an asset to the family. But we, yes, you're right, we are seeing a, a, a rise in the elder abuse. And uh, I would like to quote uh, the HelpAge India survey. And in 2013, the HelpAge India uh, did a survey which uh, came out with figures that 70% of elder abuse is where the daughter-in-law is the perpetrator. And uh, this was actually, uh, you know, there was a really uproar about, uh, uh, about these uh, figures and the following. So 80% of that abuse of elderly above 80 are facing abuse according to that HelpAge report. Yes. And you're saying that 70% of that is caused by the daughter-in-law. That's what the report said. For that matter, you should actually blame the son also. The daughter-in-law is I'm just abusing. talking about the statistics. Yeah, if the daughter-in-law is abusing your parents, then surely the son should have the backbone to stand up and say you can't. That, you becomes, that becomes one of the reasons why the families are also breaking because there are demands that, you know, we, need, we don't want to stay with the, with the family, with the elderly, with the parents, and we want a separate house. And that often becomes a reason for uh, either the, the breaking of the family or if the son uh, wants to say, stay on with the parents, it becomes a reason for divorce as well. Mira, is that a particular concern you think in India? I think it is a big concern. I'd like to take a slightly more, uh, take a step back and take a slightly more objective view on this. Um, all this, I think, I think frankly, all this hand wringing about lost values and lamenting for some older golden age, however realistic or not realistic that was, is uh, frankly a a bit pointless because that's not going to come back for a number of reasons, and b also a bit problematic. Pointless because I think uh, the breakup of the joint family happens for a number of reasons. Um, it could be economic reasons, children moving away. Lots of people opted for smaller families with, say, only one child, or you know, as opposed to larger families with multiple children who could look after them. So if you, have, for instance, have a husband and wife, both of whom are only children, then obviously there's a lot of financial pressure. People move to other countries, their children grow up there, it becomes very difficult for, for them to move so back. It's not so not just because of a loss of values, no, you're saying no, there are I'm other saying, reasons yeah, also why We need, why to, we it's need to get past this values thing for one. Um, so in that sense, yes, and a lot of it is to do with our economy and the way our workplaces are getting structured, that it becomes very difficult. Okay. So that's so, one, but, but the second point I was trying to, I, w I wanted to make was that not only is it pointless for the reasons I just said, but it's also a bit problematic to be uh, focusing this, I think, on values because I think that discussion tends to have a lot of roots in very problematic notions. For instance, um, you know, as you know, was I thought predictable from this kind of discussion. If it ultimately comes down to the son and daughter-in-law and the idea that the daughter-in-law has to live with the in-laws, then that in itself is a gendered notion that is fast losing traction today. There is absolutely no reason why, for instance, the care of parents should not fall to a daughter or a son-in-law for yeah, that matter. But that's also happening. Daughters are yeah. looking after their daughters parents. Daughters are. So why, I mean, this blame on daughters-in-law and the idea, I the responsibility on daughters-in-law, no, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's very problematic. The fact that there is no corresponding responsibility on a son-in-law is extremely problematic. No, what I, Not what, just that, but geography <laughs> actually in, in, I mean, the, the circumstances are what such I'm that geography to, matters much more. To, One second. Yeah. Your geography matters much more these days in many circumstances okay, so than So geography is a bigger relation. problem than the dog. I mean, what I, what I'm family, also trying to point out is it is, not a pro it, it is okay whether it is a joint family or it is a nuclear family. But uh, the elder abuse should not be tol tolerated whether okay. it is a joint I, I family. Mean, there should be, there should be laws for on, elders as well. Okay. I don't think anybody is in disagreement on that. Okay. But, we're but then, let's we, not fall we into the trap of old blame games that fall into gender I'm, notions okay, of responsibility. I, 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 am going to, I do want to return to the blame games to try and okay. figure out what's happening, but I just want to touch on the extent of the problem first. And look, this is why I'm, I'm talking about this. Total number of elderly in India, about 10.3 crores in 2011, give or take. Now, that population grew 36% from 2001. So India is aging. And if you look at what happened in China, that point is going to continue. So by 2000, you know, you're going to have 
maybe 18, 20 crore elderly within a few years, and that's the way. Now you have to look at what that actually implies when it comes to the issues they're going to have from healthcare, do they need assistant living? What happens, as she says, if the families are geographically far away? So these are issues that need to be looked at. What about healthcare? 70% of the elderly are in a sense paying for their own health care. They don't find it easy to get insurance. Uh, maybe 30% if you look at the statistics have pension coverage. The others don't. So in addition to emotion and being ill-treated and abused, there are very real economic and other issues that you grapple with. And in India, unlike in many other countries, you don't have the economic social security network that you do. So that makes it even worse. Alec, um, the problems of, of the elderly and, and you know, what, what do you think of it? How, how bad is it? There's no doubt about it that the joint family in the old days where my mother came from, she was a rebel and you know, she literally was a bullfighter. She crashed out of uh, the area we used to live in, Mazgaon, and uh, uh, grabbed my father and the few children she had at that time and rushed across to Kolaba to breathe the, 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 the freedom of air in Kolaba. And she said the most horrible thing about the joint family system is there was a hierarchy and you always had to ask permission for everything. Permit, it is like a permit Raj. What time will you be home? You have to be home at six. And the boys, what time will you be home? You have to be home at night. And this and that, and you have to ask your permission for every damn thing. So I can imagine the resentment of being brought up in a joint family about the children. I luckily was not in a joint family and I told my mother, this is wonderful. I don't know what a joint family means. But when I got married, I wanted to get married and my mother said, no, not that girl. That girl is already a divorcee, you can't marry her. So I said, what do you mean? I mean, I, I love her and I want to marry her. If you want to marry her, then you have to leave this house. Now that was a threat. And so that taught me that people want to dominate others. As soon as their parents, one of the worst things is domination. Instead of understanding and, and argument and, and, and discussion, we always have this, this is the rule. After all, we are not in prison. So I would say the best way for parents, when the children are young and as they grow up, please give them a chance to speak, give them a chance, their okay. right to disagree, agree to disagree, and then you will find that the love that the, that the child returns to the parent when the parent is older will not be abuses, will not be curses. It will be love and caring. And I think that is one of the problems about Indian society. Rahul do you agree with what he said? Is that part of the problem? See, if you look at the past 200 years of evolution of family, there were big extended joint families. Then it became small joint families joint families, then it became nuclear families. Now we are going the Western way of having no families, live in relationship. We are slightly moving to the no family. So the family breakdown is very evident. And please remember, economics is secondarily important. Nobody denies that. But emotion and ethics are the primary cornerstones of it. And what these two people debated was the classic fight between what the right wing calls familism versus feminism. This is the ideological debate that is going on. The one person says, see, the daughter law the Bahu has to take extra responsibility. Whereas the Bahu says, see, you know, you cannot put the entire blame on me. So what we need, what happens in India is we don't have any system like good family education or premarital education. Look at the US states, Colorado. If you have to get married in Colorado, you need to have some kind of a family education. And only by giving but proper family education. Human relations are sometimes, how, how are you going to have see, an education see, about how see, you that's should a behave as human beings with that's each other? That's the flowery way of telling I mean, what he said, parents give your children a certain amount of, of freedom, like when they are growing up. Don't, don't completely tie That's them a up. part of education. Especially if they're getting married. If they're getting married and you're saying, no, you can do this, you can't do that, then there will be a temptation to See, break that, away. That's a part of family education every parent should receive. Because parenting is a skill you have to acquire. Being parent is a gift from God or nature as you can call it. But parenting is a skill. We don't have these parenting skills or family education. And whenever somebody proposes it, we have proposed it in Kerala because Kerala is the, you know, Sinosha. Kerala is the state which is having highest geriatric issues, highest family breakdown issues, highest suicide rates issues in spite of being the most educated state. Yeah. So and lack in a sense, of in a sense, the breakdown, in a sense, some of the social problems that are coming in Kerala are sad because Kerala is always hailed as the pinnacle, this is what you should aspire exactly. to, full literacy, That's the fall of society, Kerala model because... Family is so strong, you know, all of those issues... Because are we lack value education. We went okay. a socialistic model, but we lack value education.
Rina, let me get you in on the overall you know, theme of where we are. How big a problem is it you think that the elderly are facing? And we're also trying to then figure out what's causing it. Well, from my experience, I, uh, I myself have been married in a joint family and I've lived with my in-laws when I got married. Um, but yes, I had work issues, so I, so I wanted to get to closer to my work and I went on to have a nuclear family. But when my children were small and I was working, so that's me, my husband, both have work, we had uh, proper issues of uh, daylight robbery and an attack to, uh, would say, human life, where my children were involved. And I realized the importance of joint family then. How do women go to work when, like in my case, I couldn't do it without my mother or the support of my mother-in-law? It was not impossible for me to be away eight hours, six hours, leaving my children in the hands of care or even help and a house unguarded. So for women like myself, at least in the urban cities, I would, on, based on my own experience, I can share in a, of course, even a, off your program. I've lived through this where I've understood that you learn to get along with your in-laws. You learn to make peace with your mother. You learn to be happy with your mother-in-laws. You learn to deal with them on their terms because you really need them. If you're going to improve your economic situation or your environment, and to have children, it is just not healthy without them around. It, you need them as they will be the only next to you support which your children can have in the best of ways. Okay. So I, I, I actually think the economics of a non-joint family or non-coexisting families either in the same buildings or nearby is, 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 a, is it's a bit a, of a problem. Yeah, it's commercially Al more. Alec, the Sass Bahu syndrome is not just a TV syndrome. It is a reality. And if, therefore, the parents, when, when, when they get older, they expect their son and their daughter-in-law to treat them with kindness, they are sadly mistaken. I really think this is a terrifying uh, a syndrome in, in, in Indian society. We really should change that. The Americans have a very good idea, and so have the Europeans. At the age of 18, they tell the, the child, you must leave home and live on your own. You must learn independence. But why is now, that necessarily a good idea? Hang on, that, just press the pause button the Alec, minute, for a minute there. One, why is that necessarily a good idea? I mean, Rina was talking about some of the benefits that comes with having extended families, with having the joint families. We don't have to necessarily discard everything that we've been doing out here because the US or Europe did something else. I asked some parents that I know in America, and they said, this is the one chance we get to live a real life as a married couple. The rest of the time, from the age of one to the age of 18, we are looking after our kids. We are washing them, dressing them, doing their homework, uh, 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 you know, taking care of them all the time. At the age of 18, American parents say, this is the time for us to live. We are getting a chance to enjoy our life as a couple, rather than as a uh, uh, nursemaids of our children. This is a I mean, he very makes it sound as if you, know, you are doing some you know, bad work for your children. See, see, this is all in the family. This is what the family is for. Any parent, see, I have a, I have a newborn baby. He's hardly through uh, three months old. See, it is something of my pleasure and my wife's pleasure that we are doing it for him. It is not like something like a hard work. And when you are fifty or sixty, yeah, it's very romantic to say that you you can be a couple again. But having a family is always a good thing. The whole idea, and let me quote Pope: "There is a global vision against the idea of family." and people are destabilizing the whole idea of family. I believe as Indians or as people who are responsible, who can think about the human race, we need to uphold the whole idea of family. Oh, but no rules should bind us. I mean, these are choices people make. As yeah. long as your parents are fine and you know that they're fine wherever they are, that's all that matters. So even if it's a phone call a day to reassure yourself that they're safe and they're healthy, I feel it's obligatory. Is that phone call a day? But I'm, I think that that be one question. Is that phone call a day enough, or is, is there a lot See, more? See, while I completely agree with what Rina said and uh, what Rahul said, but uh, there's a flip side to this also. While uh, when uh, we are also running a helpline for the elderly and for for the for the you know uh, abused uh, men as well it is it is very common to see that whenever there is a uh, there's a discrepancy there is a you know disagreement with, between the wife and husband where wherever there is a discord uh, between the wife and husband the elderly parents are unnecessarily dragged in 
and uh, whenever the family is breaking or a divorce is taking place, the old elderly parents are dragged in, false cases are fi filed against them, they are put behind bars, they are arrested. There are about seven to 8,000 elderly who are arrested under 498A yes. every um, year, which is about, you know, uh, less than, uh, in every less than two hours, there is one elderly who is innocent, is being dragged inside the jail just because their son's marriage did not work.